Happy Thursday, everybody. Happy Thursday, October 8th, 2020. Hope y'all doing well. Beautiful day today. I don't mean it. It's just, you want to It's absolutely gorgeous today. Absolutely gorgeous. So I was uh, watching news and in between the news clips I was watching the Steve Harvey video came on. <clears throat> and the young lady was asking some questions about online dating or dating in general. It's all the same. And then Steve Harvey proceeded to give her his take on it. I wish y'all would stop listening to Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey been married and divorced how many times? Uh, four, five, I don't know who's counting anymore. I could be wrong about the man, but he's an old sounds like an old Negro spiritual working on a chain gang Negro who who's way out of touch. He's from that boomer generation. He has no clue what online dating is. He's heard things and but he's not actually done it. When the hell, when the last time Steve has been on a date the 90s come on so sit down boy so I was trying to stall I was waiting for this lawnmower man I came out here they was going a little while ago and I waited for him to stop and as soon as I come out here he starts again I think they be watching me trying to hate on me. Anyway. She said she gets a lot of attention. She was not a bad looking girl. Pretty small. I wasn't with the blue or purple hair she had, but eh, anyway. Um, she gets a lot of attention. She gets a lot of uh, dick pics. She gets a lot of catfishing. She gets catfished a lot. Um, so my response to the dick pics and the catfishing, that's today's world, boo-boo. That happens. There's, no, there's nothing you can do to avoid that. Because even if you put on your profile, no dick pics, some men are going to still send dick pics. It is what it is. Um, the same thing happens with fellas. The fellas get titty pics and unsolicited titty pics and unsolicited coochie pics and nudes. The same thing happens. That's just, we live in an overly hypersexualized world today and that's just par for the course okay now catfishing is a little bit more tricky um that that happens because the people who are doing that thing are purposely doing it they're good at it um, but there are things you can do to uh, to limit that. So if you're online dating, only date in a small radius in your area. Five, ten miles, maybe 20. Because usually with catfishing, the person is from hundreds of miles away. Or they're from a little bit further away outside of your immediate area. So, stop looking for this magical person, this magical man who lives 
You on the East Coast and he on the West Coast. Stop looking for stuff like that. So limit the radius of what you're searching for. For example, here in Charlotte, Metro, 20 mile radius around Charlotte is a good pool of people. And I mean, you got what, three, four million people in the Charlotte, the greater Charlotte Metro. If you can't find a million, uh, a man within four, within four million people, something is wrong with you. Something is going on. But you happen to find a man who live a hundred miles away. You in Charlotte, he in Atlanta. You in Charlotte, he in Maryland. I'm not saying that can't work. But the likelihood, we're talking about probability. The likelihood of you finding a successful relationship with somebody 50, 100 miles away is not as high as it would be somebody who was five, you know, five, 10 miles away from you. And we, we got to apply common sense to this thing. Um, and you look at the old folks. And you just look at, not even just with the old folks, but you look at just successful relationships. You, you met the guy at work. You met the guy at the church or the grocery store. Those are s successful relationships. You ask the older people who've been together 20, 30 years, you know. Well, where did y'all meet? It was somewhere local. Oh, I, I, I met somebody, they, they was 100 miles away. Or I met somebody on vacation in Mexico. Come on. Come on. Stella Got a Groove Back was a movie. It wasn't reality. That's not reality for people. Most people meet somebody. You have a common interest. One of your common interests is your geographical location. That's, that's the commonality you have. And, and listen, these are my opinions, okay? I'm, I'm being very opinionated on this video. So you take it. I'm not looking to cause any debates. You take it. Take what you can from this video and go. I'm not looking for debates or arguments. That's another thing. Stop debating and arguing everything. Okay? I got some topics um, that I that are typed out in the con in the uh, description. I'm trying to remember. I don't have my other phone with me, so I can't just go back and look at them like I want to. Um, so I'm just not going in any particular order. I'm gonna try to hit all of those topics. Um, if you want a real relationship, be real yourself. You can't enter into a relationship being fake. And then want something real to come from. So just like y'all have intuition, ladies. Men have intuition too. Just like y'all get a lot of BS. Men, men get those too. And it's a reoccurring pattern for some of, you know, all, for us as well. So there's things we look out. We look out for and try to avoid. Um, Steve Harvey gave the you know women an advice on the, on his little video talking about um, get yourself a burner phone. <sighs> Again, what is this? The early two thousands. You don't need to do a burner phone. That's a waste of your money and it's fake. Now here's I'm gonna give a spin on that. Hold on a second. Who I got? Ash, what up? I'm going to give a spin on the burner phone. It's a waste of your money. Get yourself a Google voice number specifically for dating. doesn't cost you any money. It's free. And you can connect it with your existing cell phone. So that way, if you get somebody who seems shaky and they're calling you at inappropriate times or they're sending you dick pics, you can block them immediately. You can block them. Boom, done. Google makes it easy. Very, very easy. Um, 
Google Voice also helps weed out some spam calls. Um, so y'all can help avoid some of them Nigerians because they always on the hunt looking for y'all. They looking for vulnerable women all the time. And they're going to promise you the world. And then once they get you, it's going to be a whole nother ball of wax. And I'm picking on the Nigerians. It ain't just the Nigerians, but foreigners in general. Again, that goes to my 5 to 10 mile radius, okay? A lot of y'all, you've met good guys. You've met decent men. You've been walking right past them all your life. But you, um, a lot of y'all have a checklist in your brain. You got a checklist in your brain. And one of the one of the, the topics I put on the description is throw that list out the window. Throw it out the window. You're 40 years old. You're 35. You're 30. That list hasn't worked for you. It hasn't worked. But because you don't examine yourself, you want to blame somebody else for what's going on. It's time to examine yourself. Why am I not having success? Oh, the man this, the man that, it ain't no good men, men and shit. No, wrong. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. Because marriage is still 50-50. You got a 50-50 shot. So, 50% of women, or even if it's 40%, let's do 40. 40% 40 of women are still finding husbands. Okay. Let's say 50. 50% 50 of them are still finding husbands. 50% of marriages end in divorce within 5 to 10 years, right? So that's still 25% that are landing in successful relationships at, at an early age. You got to be honest with yourself. Are, are, my, are my wants and my needs in order? Because your wish list... A lot of time is based on your wants, not on your needs. Oh, I want a man who's six foot four. I want a man who's dark skin with good hair. I want this. I want him to have make a hundred thousand dollars a year. I want him. I want. I want. I want. These niggas don't exist. There's some of these. When you put that whole list together of what you want, you might have five dudes. In a whole city that meet that exact requirements. Charlotte got almost a million people. Five men out of a million? That's your problem. It's not that there's something wrong with men. There's something wrong with your requirements. Because you're missing out on good, on decent guys. Decent guys. And women always like to throw that. Oh, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. But yet, you're expecting perfection from someone else. Apply your logic, the same logic that you apply to yourself. Apply it evenly across the board. And you'll find yourself a decent guy. He'll have a job. He'll have some income. He'll have some education. He'll have things that you require. I know I'm jumping because things are coming up as I'm as I'm rolling here. Now let's talk about the education. Education doesn't equal intelligence. So you might run across a guy, a man who's never been to college, yet he's highly intelligent. But some of you, because of your checklist, got to be college educated, you're missing out. He's an intelligent guy. He just didn't have the opportunity to go to college. Or he made a calculated decision not to go to college. You will never know if you don't have a conversation with him. Okay? Some of you give your education more than it's worth. Okay? Education is just job training. Okay? It doesn't make you more intelligent. But again, that's that, that list. This is what I'm saying. Throw it out because it's hurting you. Okay? It's hurting you. I'm not saying don't have some, some kind of standards to your life. Not when it's hot out here. Not saying don't have standards. Standards in your wish list is not always the same thing. Okay? Um, 
a man being over six foot is not a standard. That's a that's not a need. That's a want. Okay. I don't care how tall you are. The average woman in this country is between five six and five seven. That's the average height for a woman. Okay. That's your that's the average height. The average height for a man is between five seven and five nine. That's the average height. So that means most of the people you fall in are going to be in that range. Okay? Now, if you happen to be a woman who's a little taller, 5'9", five 5'10", five there's nothing wrong with you dating a guy who's 5'7". I'm not saying go out here and get a midget, get somebody who's 5'1", but let's, I mean, come on. Let's be realistic. Let's be realistic. No, you ain't going to always be able to wear your heels every time you go out with the man. If you're 5'9", you probably shouldn't be wearing three-inch heels anyway. I mean, be real. You want to be married or you want to be cute? Which one you want to do? Pick one. Decide what's important for you. Can't do both. Pick one. Um, I was talking about education again education doesn't mean intelligence and then some of you you get an intelligent man and you have a problem with that because if there's things if you get an intelligent man he's going to have thoughts and he's going to share his thoughts with you sometimes and his thoughts are going to differ from yours. But some of you can't handle anything that changes or challenges your bubble that you put around yourself. And you, you think the man, he's trying to change me. He's trying to control me. No. He's an intelligent man. He's offering a suggestion. Take it for what you want. Would you rather have that dumbass nigga sitting on your living room couch playing PlayStation not working? And you got to tell him how to do that? You got to tell him how to do everything. But some of you like that. Because it's a control factor for you. You want to be in control. So much. That's what prevents you from being in a relationship. Because you don't want to give up the control. Part of being in a relationship is being vulnerable. You got to step out on a limb. You got to take that leap of faith. If you want to be in a relationship, you got to give up that control sometime. You can't be a control freak. You got to be vulnerable to be in a relationship. This is for men and women. You can't be in a relationship and not be vulnerable some way. Okay. You, you got to give it up. What you want is not going to always come in the wrapper that you want it to come in. Everything ain't going to line up perfectly. That's why you're 40, 50. Hell, I've seen 60-year-old single women, never married women. Because they always looking for the, this checklist of things. Always. Something is always wrong with the man. It's never them. And the things that y'all think are wrong with you, the men don't care about. The man don't give a shit about your hair. In the sense that you got to do all of this fancy hairstyles. Here's what men care about. Men prefer natural hair to unnatural hair. That's what men prefer. If you want to know. They would rather have a woman who doesn't have weave all up in her hair. I don't care what your natural hair looks like. If you got the nappiest hair in the world, but you rocking it natural, you will find a man who loves you. Trust me. Be confident in yourself. Because that's what it says to a man when you so fixated on your hair. Oh, she got self-esteem issues. Oh, she ain't comfortable with herself. That's what men see. They won't never speak on it. They just pick up on it. Now... Some men will use that insecurity against you, so you got to be careful with that as well. Okay.
Um, lashes. Men hate eyelashes. Them fake ass eyelashes that look like you got a spider on your eye. You know what I'm talking about. Stop doing that, ladies. Stop doing that. Men don't like that. That ain't that ain't impressing no man out here. No man is marrying no woman or getting a woman because she had them eyelashes in. Please stop. It ain't never made nobody look cute. It make y'all look goofy as shit. Please stop doing it. Mr. Wilson, what up? I'm back. Where boots? Oh, laying down? Mm-hmm. No, he right here now. Mm -hmm. He just, he saw you, so he went around. Okay. where you going? You need water? You can come in. Um, I'm going to eat something, and then I'll probably be back upstairs. What I you eating? I have a leftover salad from yesterday. There's meatloaf in there, too. I made. Oh, you got meatloaf? Mm-hmm. Oh, I might get that. Um, I have an interview at four o'clock. Whoa. Windstream. Okay. Ashley's gonna put a referral in for you. Make, text me your email address one more What's time. The company. LPN. LPN. Yeah. You want me to have a call you so she can just tell you about it? Well, let me go on. I'm I'm in Jobville right now. I gotta get ready for this interview. It'll probably she at work now anyway. I have a call but you later. LPN. Let me look it up. Yeah, I'll have a call you later. And see what's up. I got an interview tomorrow, too. Whoa. Uh, Wells Fargo. Yeah, that's good for you, too. I can see that. Um, I, can get you a, I can get you a referral there, too. From Wells Fargo. I know I know people that work there. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, the lady contacted me today. You know who? I don't know her. Oh. Uh, <laughs> who? I mean, I know some people, you know. I don't know some lady. You don't want to go work for Converters? I can get you one of no. Converters. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> I really don't even want to be back in the phone business. Yeah, I know. All, quite frankly. I know. Stream, I just want to see kind of what they're paying. I like Converters. Yeah. Um, LPN to be better for you. Well, Wells Fargo's not bad either. That's yeah, Wells Fargo's the, good. That's in the loan... Uh, Mortgage, mortgage process, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's so, exactly where my friend works. I'd rather do something like that than being... being yeah, doing customer service. Doing, well, doing uh, phone stuff again. I'm like tie the phone. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't even want to hear your phone ring, quite frankly. Yeah, just text me your email again, yeah. please. All right, I'm sorry, y'all. My aunt likes to talk to me when I'm doing these videos, you know. I've been here all day. Anyway, <laughs> some of y'all do that to me. As soon as I start doing these videos, that's when y'all want to call me. I'll be here all day. Won't nobody call me. Won't nobody talk to me. Um, unless I'm asleep. If I'm asleep, that's when, when people want to call me or doing something. Anyway, yo, it's getting hot out here, yo. I did not expect this weather today. This is, wow. This is gorgeous. It is gorgeous, but, um, and the lashes, the eyelash thing kind of goes into one of the topics I said, you got to use the right beat. So you got to decide what you want. Okay. Because what you want and what you need, because some of you just don't know what you want. Or you, or let me say, don't know you. You're not communicating what you want. Okay. Are you looking for a friend with benefits? Are you looking to build a relationship? Are you looking to get married one day? Do you want kids? Do you have kids? Are you looking for a stepdaddy? Whatever it is, be honest. And I mean, don't check every box because a lot of them dating profiles you can check box multiple boxes. No, pick one and stick to it. Because if you pick in multiple, all of the above kind of thing, then the man doesn't know how to behave with you. Okay? And that's how games get played. If you're up front, hey, I'm looking for a long-term relationship. If that's what you are looking for, then the man knows how to act accordingly. Okay? If you're looking, I don't know if my eye, my eye was bloodshot yesterday. I don't know if it still is, y'all. Can you tell me if it is? 
I think somebody punched me in my eye when I wasn't looking. I gotta look in the mirror. Anyway, um, be clear to yourself and what you're communicating. Make sure what you want is what you're communicating. Um, and, and, and this, sometimes even with something simple like, hey, let's go grab a bite to eat. Hey, what, what would you like to eat? I don't know. Oh, okay, well, what kind of restaurants do you like going to? I don't know. Everything is a I don't know. But then at the same time, you want this man to give you what you want. He's asking you. He's seeking that information. You can't communicate. You're unable to communicate. Work on that. Here is what I want. You may not know the restaurant that you want to go to, but you know what kind of food you want. You know what? I'm in a burger. I'm going to move to a burger. Now he can make some suggestions. Oh, okay. You want a Five Guys? You want Applebee's? You want McDonald's? I mean, what you want? Um, now, a first date scenario, I don't recommend going to McDonald's. To me, that's hood shit. And you're going to be getting just that. You're setting a standard. But the first day, you want to go out to Applebee's, you want to grab a burger, go to Applebee's or something. Go somewhere where you can sit down face to face and talk. I think that damn uh, fly from doggone them, the debate is over here. Um, stop texting so much. Stop texting. Have your initial conversation through text. Hey, how you doing? How's your day going? Blah, blah, blah. See see what kind of language is coming out. But you need to shift quickly. You need to make a shift quickly one way or the other. Do I want to, am I interested in this guy? If you are interested, let's move to a phone conversation. Because that's going to tell you a lot. Hey, here's my number. Give me a call. You know? And, um... Now you could put a voice to the face. Okay? You could put a voice to the face. Um... Seventy percent of all communication is non-verbal. So some of that can be picked up on the phone. Text messaging, a lot of things get lost in translation. You're putting your own context on somebody else's words. And if you have never spoken to this person, you're going to get things out of context. I've had that happen with me a lot. Like you text something. I always use that key and peel um it's a clip on Key and Peele texting where Key and Peele is texting each other. And Key, key in the end of the video, Peele shows up at the, at, the, um, at the bar. They're supposed to be meeting at the bar. And he shows up at the bar with a bat with nails in it because he's ready to kill the dude. And the dude is like, what are you doing? Like, he was excited to see his friend. The other one wanted to kill him. If you haven't seen that clip, go watch it. That, that explains a lot what happens with sex messages. People, we don't understand what words mean as a people. And what you think a word mean might not be what it actually means. But he's using the word correctly, but you think it means something else, and then you get offended. And then you put preconceived notions on this good guy. Because you think he's an asshole and he wasn't even being an asshole. This is why you need to shift to a conversation. You don't need to text somebody for a month, for two months, before you decide to talk to him. Okay? This is... Women have a problem with time. Time is only a measurement of space. That's only time. How far... It takes the light to bounce from that to this, from this phone to me, this time. That's the time in between, the space. Well, the same is true for a relationship, 
Okay. This is why I also said in the beginning, it's all ties together. Five to ten miles. Because if you're a hundred miles away, the time is going to be longer. Same exact relationship if you were five miles away would be a lot shorter. That's physics, people. That's the way it works. You want to shorten that distance so that way you can start having a connection with somebody. 70% of communication is nonverbal. So that means only 30% of communication is verbal. And if you're on a text message with somebody, you're missing out on a whole lot of information and you're making judgments based on that thing. It's a thing called chemistry that people have. How people vibe. I think that's the word the young girls is using. Vibe. I want to vibe with somebody. Okay. You can't do that through a, through a text message. Incoming call. I put it on the screen. Stay away from bars as well. Um... Um... Here in Charlotte, I'm talking about bars like uh, the press box. You ain't going to meet your husband at the press box, okay? Again, it's, remember the bait. The bait is important, and the fishing hole that you go to is important as well. So if you go into a fishing hole, sorry, fellas, with a bunch of scrub-ass niggas, because that's all that's there at, at the press box. It's a bunch of wannabe dope boys and scrubs. That's what you're going to end up with. And bars like that. Quality men don't hang out in bars. Now, a man might get off of work, go get a drink with his friend, that kind of thing. But that's not the majority. It's a numbers game. That's not most of the case for these dudes that's at a bar. And you could tell by the way they dress. Do they got work clothes on? Do we still got his badge on? No, you looking at a bunch of clowns, they went home and put on their freshest gear, their crispest Jordans, and went to the bar like that. You ain't, you ain't dealing with working men. And they're easy to spot. We got a polo shirt on, some khakis. If he's working at a call center, hey, he may be a construction worker. He got some work boots on. Those are the dudes you want, not no dude wearing Jordans. You want a man in some shoes or some work boots if you're looking for a working man. Dudes wearing Jordans ain't working men, typically. Not at the bar. Because a working man, that's not important to him. He might I'm not saying he don't have a pair of Jordans, but he ain't running home to go change into his Jordans to go out to the bar. That's a dude that's looking to catfish you. That's looking at the dude that's trying to smash. Now, if you're a chick that just want to get smashed, then that's what's up. Then, But that's that goes back to decide what you want. But the dude that's trying to, who's only looking to smash you, ain't trying to marry you. All men want to smash. Okay, so just get that out your head that... Um, and he trying to smash, so he ain't about nothing. No, I'm not saying that. If a dude only wants to smash, you got to learn how to p spot the spot the types. Okay. You you could tell certain animals by the stripes they wear, you know, or the spots they got. You know, this is all humans are nothing but animals. We're the same way. There's certain characteristics. We move a certain way. Um, avoid turn off questions what are turn off questions turn off questions or, or statements are things that shut the conversation down hey how you doing I'm fine okay how was your day today sweetie good you see what I'm doing? Every statement that the way you respond is a turnoff. 
You only got one word answers. You short. Ain't nothing to it. And there's nothing to build a conversation with. A lot of you do this and don't even realize you're doing it. It's a turn off. Certain questions. One for me is, what do you do for fun? I hate that question. That's one of the first questions. That's not a first conversation question. Don't ask that. Let That'll come up eventually. That'll come up later on. You don't have to ask that question. But right off the bat, you worried about what I do for fun? What kind of games do I play? I'm a grown-ass man. I ain't thinking about fun. And is that what you want? You're a grown woman. You're 40. You got kids. You got bills. Do you really want the first thing you could think of with a man you're trying to be in a relationship is with? What does he do for fun? And what answer is he going to give you that's going to be so mind-blowing? Please, I'll wait. It's a stupid fucking question. Please don't ask that. Because with, and I think this is about what words mean. Because I got into a conversation with a young lady one time about this. And her response to me, I told her I really don't understand what you're asking me. And she thought I was being funny. So I said, you know what, let's get on the phone and talk. So we started talking. And I said, well, let me ask the question to you so I know how what, what you're looking for. Because I don't think you're using the word correctly. She goes, well, she starts naming her hobbies. Oh, I like to bake. I like to do. Okay. So what you meant to ask me is what are my hobbies? Hobbies and fun are not always the same thing. Fun is play. Is a game. I was a photographer for a long time. That was a hobby of mine. And. That was a hobby, but I never looked at it as it was fun. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't fun. See, see what I'm saying? I played basketball for fun. You know, that, that, that's more fun. You play video games for fun. A hobby is something different. Okay? But again, you got to adjust your mentality. Little things like that. It's a turn off for me. And, and for a lot of men. And I just use that as an example. There are other things. Um, what are your priorities? Because what you say communicates. You got direct communication. And you got indirect communication. And. What you don't say. Tells people a lot about you. As, as, as much as what you do say. So what are you saying? Be conscious of those unspoken things. And that brings me to your pictures. This is a big thing. Some of you take horrible pictures. You're gorgeous, but you take horrible pictures. You, you got web, you got Facebook, you got Instagram, you got all kinds of sites on online where you can see good pictures. Make yours look like that. <laughs> you shouldn't have a picture where you got this half of the picture is empty on, on top of your head. We talk about the square picture or, or whatever. All of this space above your head and and just a, just a little portion of your head is in the picture. Come on, turn your phone now. Make sure your full face is in the picture. Um, and I've said this one before. You big girls. There are men out here who like big girls, a lot of men. But you're always trying to hide yourself. Stop taking this picture or the shoulder up picture like we don't know you a big girl. Because only big girls do that. <laughs> I mean, it's obvious. You're trying to, like you're self-conscious about how you look below your shoulders. But don't you realize you got a neck holding up that big ass head you got? Let that sh let all of this show. So you should have some face pictures, some full body pictures, 
pictures and in different outfits. Don't post a hundred pictures with the same outfit on. Who wants to see that? Show a little variety. Make sure your and I don't think Steve Harvey covered this topic, but make sure your pictures are up to date. Nobody wants to see your prom picture in your 40. So that goes into the catfishing thing. You know? Okay, I got him. So your your present have a man, your homeboy, your brother, your cousin, look at your pictures. Get a man's put don't get your homegirl's opinion. Get your homeboy's opinion. Hey bro, let me, look at my profile real quick. Tell me if these pictures look okay. Nobody wants to go through a thousand memes to see five pictures of you either. A man will lose interest. He's gonna scroll, he's gonna be like, okay, me, me, me. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Make sure your picture is how you look every day. Your main picture. Don't put your glamour shot on as your profile because that's a form of catfishing. That's not how you look every day. Let's see how you look every day because that's what a man is going to be coming home to. So again, he's going to feel catfished or he's going to think he's been catfished if he shows up to meet you and you don't look how your 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 portrait, your main profile looked. Just be regular. There is a guy who likes you exactly how you are now. Just show it. Let that let your light shine. Okay. Some of you are so self-conscious, and instead of talking to men about what men want, you talk to other girls and you just make up stuff in your head. You'd be surprised what a man wants. Everybody don't want what's the uh brainiac Beyonce. Everybody don't want Beyonce. I'm not attracted to Beyonce. I don't I don't think she's cute at all. Personally. I, I she's just not my type. Um and it ain't just the blonde hair. I mean, there's things, other things about her. I think she's a gorgeous woman. She's just not my type. Just because a man thinks somebody's pretty or gorgeous doesn't mean he wants to be with her. It's other things. Other things. Fix them pictures, lady. That's that's a horrible, that's a turn off. The fun question is a turn off. Ask some some grown questions. And the type of questions you ask says a lot about you. Because it tells me about where your mindset is if the first thing you ask me is what I do for fun. Okay. You you don't know where I'm from. You don't know what kind of work I've done. You don't know my education or my intelligence, my political views, my parental views. You don't know none of that. But you skip over all of that and go right to what you like to do for fun. Are you serious? How about what do you see yourself in five years? What are your long-term goals? Because see, now a man says, okay. And you may make him think about something that he hasn't been thinking about. Okay? So, oh, okay, wow, she's concerned about the future Maybe I see a future with her because she got me thinking about the future. Okay. Hey, what do you think about stocks? Or, you know, you got any stock tips or whatever? You know, whatever. You heard about any good stocks or anything I should be looking at? You'd be surprised who has information. You would be surprised. Hey, I was on the, the train the other day and somebody said something about this stock. You know, I didn't look into it, but, you know, to answer your question, you'd be surprised. You'll be surprised. Y'all, y'all focus on the wrong shit. Ask about the important. Does this man know how to do anything? What kind of skill does he have? Can he change the tire? Does he know how to use a hammer and a nail? 
Can he operate a drill? Can he get a drill? Ask a question. Hey, man, I need this cab that put together. You got a drill? Ask a question like that. That'll tell you a lot about a man. Because he'd go, yeah, yeah, I got one in my trunk. Oh, okay, so he's handy. Okay. Oh, he's a handyman. Well, he's somewhat handy. If a man got a drill in his car, he handy. Okay. Can he cook? Can he talk to you about grocery shopping? I mean, any, I mean, just basics. Because that says a lot about who the man is, his upbringing. Does he know how to grocery shop? Does he know how to cook? If you go down and somebody got to buy the groceries, can he do it? Test them out. Hey, listen, um, why don't you come by my house for, you know, instead of us going out, why don't, why don't we cook or whatever? That's a great first date. Hey, why don't you cook? You got to put yourself, oh, I'm worried about crazy people. Guess what? You meet crazy people every day. You think they're just online? No, those same people that are online are walking around everywhere. <laughs> Come on, people. You work with crazy people. Nobody out here looking for y'all. Some of y'all are just so freaking ridiculous. Ain't nobody looking for you. If a person was a hacker, but you got to use a burner phone, guess what? He going to get the GPS off that burner phone anyway. So don't, come on now. He, he don't even need the GPS. He, he'll be able to find who you are by your IP address. I mean, come on. Come on. What I got? Come on. I'm, I'm just trying to share some thoughts with y'all, give y'all some things to think about. And this may be an ongoing series. Um, but you got to examine yourself first. What am, have I been doing wrong? Because if you've been doing the same thing for 40 years, you're going to keep doing that thing? Because you think God is going to send you a man? That ain't in the Bible. It ain't nowhere in the Bible that God is going to send you a man. Nowhere. <laughs> Nowhere. That's your responsibility, Babu. The scriptures say, be continuously with a godly man. That's what the scripture says. But some of y'all, y'all make up your own doctrine and you want to live by it. It sounds cute, but it ain't based on nothing. It ain't based on nothing real. It don't come from nowhere. And that's why a lot of you can't find a man. Because you talk yourself out of it. That inner voice and, and, your, and your mouth. You talk yourself out of a man. You got to put work in. You got to engage. And if you ain't doing those things, no wonder you're single. The man just ain't going to walk up to your door and go, hey, honey, I'm home. It doesn't work that way. But y'all think men is on Amazon and somebody's just going to deliver them to you or something. I don't know. Um, but again, like I said, some of y'all, y'all be working right next to a, de a good dude. Be working with him. Y'all done put Vernon and the cousin Vernon in, 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 in the friend zone. He a perfect dude for you. You done put him in the friend zone. He the homeboy. He big bro. But he be the perfect dude for you. Because he ain't six foot two. <laughs> he a little pudgy. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever his, his hang up is. Can it be fixed? Then y'all think, oh, a man needs to fix his issues before he get me, he meets you. Because he got to come up to your standard. And you ain't fixed. Your shit ain't together. <laughs> but he, he's supposed to work with you. But you ain't going to work with him. Come on now. Got to get in. You want to learn how to swim, you got to get in the water. <laughs> as simple as that. Some of you scared to do that. Y'all want to make sure you want to stick your toe in. Is the water warm? Is it this? Is it that? Is it? That's not the way relationships work. You want to swim, you got to get in the water. You can't swim with one toe in. Try and see it. It ain't the end of the world. But try and see. 
You might surprise yourself. Some things are surprising. But y'all take all of the surprise out because you want to control every step of the process. And the process is not meant to be controlled. Be right next to the perfect dude. For you. And you won't even pay attention, some of you. I think I'll hit all the topics. I don't know. I'll go back and look. And if y'all got topics that I haven't thought of, please send me a message, DM me. Y'all know how to do it. Um, so all I got, like and share, follow V. Right.